today this is gonna be I'm gonna do this is gonna be I'm repeating the same word multiple times this is a tutorial for Hearts of Iron 4 and I'll teach you the basic about the game firstly I mean, let me take from the beginning you enter the game you see quit credits option multiplayer and single player Quit means if you want to leave the game Credits means if you want to still make the game And other stuff like lead artists And stuff Options If you want to change audio Video Resolution Game AKA auto save is need to simple Use of fly wickets for this external web Browser for join Accessibility Scroll and zoom speed Multiplayer change blah 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 Multiplayer is if you want to play with other players, but just to tell you Queen Enemies, okay. Oh, nice name Mystery Dog is the name of the civilian and yeah these are the servers. If you want to play with random people, you can. If you want to play with your friends, you can. You just need to make a server by pressing the host button. And then the rest, you and then host, and then you need to tell your friends what's the password and what's the name. But here we are to talk about single play. So you press single play, and you see this continue, new game, load, and tutorial. Most probably, you have this down. Like I, you saw in the last video, that story isn't very good, but you can try it if you want. So you press new game. Then you get an option, 1946 or 1949. My recommendation is if you are a less experienced player or do you want to do a let's play about a uh, video, a let's play about a country like Germany, you want to do a let's play. And you do a video about it, I just repeated the same thing three times in a row. You press 9.46. And if you are a new player, or just begin the game. Or don't want such a pass game. In 9.39, 44 guns, 9.39, you start only... If you feel like you want a challenge, or you are so good that you want the challenge. So you're gonna press this one. Right now. Now you get the selection screen. Uh, initially, when you're gonna start the game, these countries will be out of the question. So, when you start the game with no DLCs, you have only France, United States, United Kingdom, Germany, Italy, Japan, Russia, or Poland. For this one, we're gonna play as the United States of America. So it's at the United States of America. Such a beautiful country. Of course, if you wish, you can just left click on any country and play as it. But they're gonna have a generic focus tree. AKA generic focus tree, meaning they are gonna have only basic stuff that almost every country has. The special countries, like I like calling them, like the United States, have a focus tree that are more accurate to their historical or alternate historical paths. So, here comes the fun part. You have um, five difficulties. One, two, three, four, and five. Civilian, which is, again, for noobs. I can see you get so many buffs. I'm going to teach you which one, every one of them. We can do it. Um, in this one, you cannot get achievements. You cannot get achievements. In recruit, again, you can't get achievements. But again, it's for um, only starter players. I remember the first month when I had this game, I only played on civilian. And then I went to challenge and went to regular. Then I sucked at regular, then I gave up on it, and then... I started again with my one. <laughs> with the one I could understand. And yes. I never 
I now on regular. I mean, I never played the veteran on Elite One. I have to admit it. But it doesn't matter. Recruit is still for new players, but players that have at least a little knowledge. Played for like one, maybe two weeks already the game. And I didn't know how to do some stuff. Regular, if you already played one month, you can start playing regular. On regular is the first level you are allowed to get achievements on. But you see, there's still excellent. Well, you're gonna need to play in Iron Man mode. But I'm gonna teach you later what's Iron Man mode. So, regular. It's for like, um, okay players, like they are used to. Some pro players play on regular. Regular, in my opinion, is the. Uh, is very fun. Because it's neither hard, neither easy, it's like normal, it's like it's fair for everybody and it's good to play. Veteran, oh you need to be like, like the name says, veteran, you need like one year already of play the game, you already know all the tactics, you already know how to do everything, but everything on the level, on the map, focus the army assignments and the rest. You can see, they are debuffs, while the AI gets buffs, which until now it wasn't. I know. Then we get to Elite, which is like, maybe after you played like 10 matches of veteran, you are ready to try Elite. Elite, I do not recommend until you are sure you can beat almost every country in every mode. Like if you conquer the world in every one of the modes, then yeah, you can try it. You can see it has lots of debuffs. On both veteran, regular veteran and elite, you can get. You can, you can get the achievements. But as a player that played, if you want fun, go on regular. Nothing. All right. We talked about the figures. Now we have the custom game rules that you Custom game rules is like if you want to have fun, like strength when Germany make Germany stronger. Even if you are playing, then AI behavior you can choose what type of the focus G2. Or if you hover on top of one, it tell you what they will do in this focus tree. There are lots of them. Then here you can do world goals limited means a little bit. Always free, that means they will call me always the clear world, release nations free. Here they are little stuff. And here you can um, decolonize Africa and stuff. Alright. Done. Dilly dilly. Now, these two are very important. Iron Man mode. You can get achievements if you have 1946 Iron Man mode. Regular or high difficulty using custom difficulty. No, all game rules allow achievements. Yeah, that's all you need to know to get achievements. Okay, um, Iron Man mode, regular, don't touch this button and don't use mods in the game and perfect. You can get achievements in the game. There are lots of achievements, some harder than another. Okay, now what's historical AI you are saying? Well, if you want to be more accurate to history, then you might press historical AI. Well, Britain, France will go after the historic focus. For example, Germany declared war on uh, Poland, the World War II will start, blah blah blah, Germany loses. If you don't press historical AI, there's a chance for Germany to do something else. For example, uh, a return of the Kaiser, where the Kaiser takes back Germany. That's an example. I'm gonna play without Iron Man mode, just for this. Alright. Now, as the United States. We're gonna take one by one, each one, different stuff. We're gonna first press on the United States of American flag, on this flag. Now you can see a big menu, a scary menu, I have to admit. It isn't hard to understand. 
Why did I say like this? Okay. What's the national focus? You remember when I told you earlier in the video you can go on a other history path or a normal history? Well, this is how you do it. The menu is large and each one does something else for your country. Okay, and if you hover, you can see the description of it and what parts they will give you. For example, known as currently ruling, this focus will cancel. Okay. Yeah, they don't really go for such a big good description. No, yeah. This, are this way. You can even see by the nails what they mean. Focus on Europe, and okay, you want to defeat Europe. And yes, these are the focus pieces. You just need to left click and start. And then left click again and you can start your focus. Just read the titles, look at the buffs. And the titles are really explicit, so if a title catches your eye, then try it. This game is a lot about trying. And learning the multiple paths of the focus tree so you can choose for each country which is your favorite you, of course you can go back and do something like conquer the whole world as the united states and become communist now we have this these are called national spirits national spirits aren't kind of important but they are at the same time for example this um the naval treaties the great depression and other stuff can give you buffs or debuffs uh, buffs meaning <laughs> meaning buffs <laughs> like bonus factories, better factory build and stuff. I'm later in the video. Do we gonna talk about this part? Oh, look at Canada. It's so big. It's a buff stick. <laughs> I'm gonna teach you what are buffs in Norway. Alright! How can you get about the Great Depression now? If you go to a focus and check the focus, it's gonna tell you. Um, if you do this focus, you get rid of the National Spirit. But you need to go all over the focus and try finding it. Again, by looking at the titles, you can correlate what could be the one referring to for example you go only for money stuff to get rid of great depression wow look you can find it is this isn't really important for the game um this tells how much democratic support you have 99 percent one percent zero zero for example if you like for example want the fascism you would see this bar is going and if you see it's growing that means a Somebody's influencing your politics and you need to stop it. I'm going to teach you later in the video how to stop it. Or B, hey, I'm happy. I'm finally getting an upgrade to the country I'm running. Hooray. Occupied territories. What are occupied territories? Well, there are territories that you occupy. Duh. No, but serious. <laughs> um, This shows how much tension there is. Resistance. If there is resistance to a country, for example, I think 25% is one of them, uh, it's hard to build factories or put your troops there. Something like that. So you need to be wary of this. You can always give the Vipers release nation and you can release as a puppet or play as a country and it's as a puppet or just play as it. Your choice. Your total, total choice. All right, here we get to the tough things. These are laws and government. Here, I don't really need to explain you a lot. Here, conscription, you talk about how many people can join the army in the manpower. For example, if I press this, more people will join the army than my 248,000. And this is about trade. For example, free trade, export trade. Each one gives, if you hover again above the, you will understand what they mean and understand if there is an X in front of the thing that means you can't do it 
if it's a tick that means you have one of the things you want blah 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 uh, this is very important you really need this as the United States it doesn't start it starts with undisturbed isolation which is a bad bad thing I'm telling you if you ever have that you're gonna need to change it very fast but again hover on top of it and you understand what you need to do and the buffs and debuffs of it political again guess what go on top of him check what he does then left click and choose him and the same goes for all this thing political power what's political power well as political power you can do this lots of things like choose your politicians that control your country but of course by going hovering on top of them checking what they say yada 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 stability it's very important if you have low stability that can happen through uh, resistance to occupation or um, through na a bad national spirit for example you have like 10% resistance if this the legionaries are like at, I'm sorry the silver legion of America are at like 50% they can start a civil war against you and then you need to fight against yourself which isn't a great thing in my opinion all right what is war support it's how much your country supports going to war if you go to war when they don't want war like 5% war support you go to war just the petty goes down and welcome civil war as a billion war support um, war support really focuses on stability when, uh, if I go now to war uh, my stability will go down the drain and if I have fascism, 50% William Dudley Pelly will start a civil war against me. This is manpower, like I told you before, manpower can be up, up, up through the conscription law. Again, hover against them and see what they do and the things you need to do to get them. Of course, everything and any political power. <laughs> and what is manpower useful? Well, manpower is very useful for uh, making new soldiers. You really need new soldiers as a country, like the United States or other country. Doesn't even matter what country you are, you just need soldiers if you don't want to die in 10 seconds. Yeah. And as many, um, as as much manpower you have, you can make more and more. Cool. Three now. Grand Theft out of five. I was recording here. I would like to continue recording, but no. All right. <laughs> Where was I? Again, you can make army by manpower. But remember, if you make one soldier, your manpower, one division, your manpower will go down. But it can go up if it matters what's your conscription law like. I recommend going for excess conscription. Never go for this ones. They will just give you debuffs. Very big debuffs. You might have more manpower, but don't get tricked by that. Excess conscription is the best in my opinion. Listen to me. Listen to Los Angeles. Factories, what are factories used for? Well, I'm not gonna tell you now, I'm gonna tell you later. Common power is made for upgrading your commanders, um, army experience to see how strong your army is. Um, army a commander power just comes naturally over time. Like army experience if you are at war or exercise with soldiers, navy experience the same, and air experience the same as army experience. Convoys, this is how many ships you have already, ready for battle or for going. Decisions, decisions, decisions. It's the hardest thing of them all to understand. Uh, again, hover on top of the thing and understand what does it mean. Each decision can do something else. 
For example, I hover on top of this, they tell you, if you do this, um, you're gonna get out of the evil titties, um, your, your national spirit of the titties will just disappear and bye bye. You can ban communism, that means all that politi all that um, support for that thing this just disappears suddenly, don't have support, but you can do something, sadly you don't have it here. But for example, I'm gonna now give him a design with cheats, remember. I'm now using cheats for this tutorial. Fit I'm now fast is 50%. Now, usually if I was 50%, I would get something like ask me if I want to start a civil war or wait to have a national referendum. And like a normal person, you'd usually wait to have a national referendum before you start any civil war. One example, now I'm gonna become fast, just for the sake of the video. Look, now I'm the free American empire, woohoo. And these are focuses. You need political power, oh, damn, decisions. Political power, um, Was I? Yes. The political power for decision. And the power comes over time by itself. You can upgrade it through national focus trees. Or through a sign worship which gives you bonus political power. Just to know. Very important. And decision. Just left click on the decision after hovering on top of it, checking what it says, blah blah blah. Intelligent. I'm not gonna go, f I'm gonna go briefly through that because it's just if you had the La Resistance DLC. I'm just telling you now. So this is gonna be brief. Um, you can make spies. As spies, you can go to different countries, find them, give you advantages to fight them, blah blah blah. Yeah, I'm not gonna go in depth, in depth about it, but if you want me, I can go in another video. Research. Research is uh, important. What does research do? And the advances in technology. For example, again, if you hover on top of it, the, you can see the paths. I can do the best ones to start always, this is my study. Start with basic machine tools. Construction one, uh, electronic mechanical engine, and the fourth research to be a uh, fuel storage if you don't have it. But if you have it, then go for barn stock smelter. But the one there. This is for that. You don't need political power for this. It's just like the focus. You just press it, then left click on it, and done. And it's search. Again, if you hover it on, over on top of it. You can see the buffs and the buffs. Um, now here we get to something. Diplomacy. Well, diplomacy isn't very important. You can here see um, with who we are guaranteeing, what are the major countries of the world, blah blah blah. For example, I press on on Soviet Union. They don't like. I can press on. This is all diplomacy. Okay, in the first place, you need justify world goal to declare war. For example, you don't like a country or you want to conquer it. Well, you need to look at over on top of it, see what are the reasons, what do you need to justify. Justify. Justification usually takes 306 days, one year. But if you want to declare a justify world goal on multiple countries, which you can do, just state in mind that it will grow. For example, in Soviet Union can be 360 days. You want to you want to just start justifying on Latvia, it will be 384 days. So it will grow in the number of days until war time. After the justification phase you can declare war. But remember there's just a limit. If I'm not mistaken, there's a one month limit to declare war on them. If you don't declare war in that one month you need to justify again on them. 
So remember, get ready that one year gap to, to conquer a country before it's late. To guarantee independence means if somebody attacks the country, uh, they can ask your help and you can come and help them in the war. You would want to do this if you want to have good relations with a country as strong as you almost. And make them like join your alliance and work together for total world domination. Military access. You can put soldiers in their countries. It's good for when you are at war, you can just declare war on a country and go through another country and enter another country and you will have like multiple fronts against them. And, for example, your troops can get surrounded. For example, if they are at border with Italy and have military access at Italy, they can run to Italy and they will not die. I'm gonna teach you about division later in the video. Offer military access is totally the opposite of the S for military access, except for you getting troops in their countries to attack, surprise attack uh, the country you are at war with. Um, they um, ask you for military access to surprise attack the country they are fighting with. As for docking rights, again, like as for military, except now for using military, so just use boats to resupply your boats to naval invade and offer docking right is the same improve relations is the same offer docking is the same offer matrix improve relations is something i can do to improve relations for if a country as good as your relation is you can do multiple factors like non-aggression pack send a tashi attache i don't know french um um, you can ask them to join your faction and work together as a country. All the stuff. So if you really like a country and you want to get friendly with them, improve relations. If you improve relations with a country, the chance to justify war goal on you becomes slimmer. Send a You will now know about more about the. You, they will know more about your military, but. You will know more about their military as well. So it's like you learn about each other's military and you can see how they send their troops and stuff where well they are situated. It's very good if you are friendly with a country and want to betray them and you just send an attaché, they are not in your faction. Um, check where are the soldiers, then justify what goal and you are ready to attack and know which is the weak spot. Non aggression pack is when you are sure. When you are sure they are justifying war goal on you and ready, you have good improved relations. Just send them a non aggression pack and to end this 12 month period. I read it here. For a 12 month period, they cannot declare on you. And if you hover on top of it, you can see all the debuffs after the 12 months that happens. It's going to be harder for them to declare war on you. For 25 30 months that means almost 25 30 months that means um oh, oh a bit over two years the less debuff goes away so it's kind of as to join faction is when you do a military alliance very important about as to join faction is better than a set attached because attaché because um you are in the same alliance and you can see the movement of the troops at any moment but without um, using your political power, like the send attaché thing and your command points. So it's kind of good. And if you ever need help, like the guarantee independence, you can ask them for help or they can ask you. And you can just fight together the country. So it's send attaché and guarantee independence in one. Negotiate license. Uh, you talk about... So I ask them about production and they can help me with production, arms and the rest. Start land list. For example, uh, I need weapons or they need weapons. I give them weapons and at request land list they give me weapons or stuff what I demand. Oil and stuff to help me in the work. Send volunteer, it's when 
and to have a certain country in a civil war or in a war can send some troops, usually a small amount like 6 divisions, 7 divisions, to help them in a war, but uh, in a smaller amount, they will be just uh, for then military soldiers. After the war, um, they will go back to your country and they will almost forget about it, like it never exists. Expeditionary force. It's when you take troops for, from them and use them for your army. But in a couple of like, I think, months. If I'm not mistaken. We can't ask them too many troops, but after 2F months or something, they'll demand the troops back and even if you are at war, they don't care, they get the troops back. And you lose part of your army at the border. So it's a very... Then when you know you are almost getting Berlin, and you, but you struggle, you can just get some troops from them, fight them fast, and then defeat Berlin, and then you don't care. The German capitulates, you are next parts of it or puppet it, and done, almost. Return expeditions. It's when you are done with the soldiers and you don't care anymore and you want to wait 12 months until they get them back, you just send them back yourself, manually. Okay, so support. Um, for example, you want to protect your coastline from enemy attacks. You can ask them to help you as well for your coastline, so you don't use so many soldiers to protect the coastline. Trade. What is trade? And why do we need trade? Well, trade is very useful for resources. For example, um, you can trade with civilian factories, which I will teach you at construction. Well, I'll better now teach you about construction because trade is a hard, hard, hard thing to learn and need. Infrastructure. Of course, you can hover on... I'm not going to explain each one what it does, like uh, the diplomacy. You can hover on top of them and see what they do. Each one. So some anti-air, some of them. Uh, you understand what they mean? Civilian fact military factories are used for production. For example, the protection of weapons, you need military factories to protect weapons. Uh, civilian factories are used for trading or for building stuff. Naval dockyards are used for boats. Synthetic refiners are used for making rubber. Man-made rubber, not natural rubber. Uh, fuel silo is for putting your fuel, which is very important for the game. I'm gonna teach you in a moment about the fuel. Like you saw at the beginning, I avoided that spot just for now. Fuel is very important for tanks. Fuel, you can only get it if you have enough oil and enough fuel still. So, build those fuel cells and build those oil and build that oil. No, collect that oil. Each country has more amount of oil. For example, Iran is one of the, and Romania are brilliant at oil. You will run out very hard of the oil. There are some kind so much unnatural resources that I... I usually, when I'm playing as Japan or stuff, I want to conquer that country as fast as I can. To have all the resources I need. That's why I usually take Iran. Because they have so much oil that if I conquer them... And they are easy to, to defeat because they have only three divisions. That I'm perfect. Like this. Alright, off point. Rocket sight helps you with rockets and nuclear reactor <gasps> to form nuclear bombs. As you can only form nuclear bombs after you search um, the focus atomic research. I think at the research I've got to say, you see those years? Yes. Never press on 1940 when it says next to 1940. That means you cannot research it at the moment, so don't even bother. Or it will take 1,444 uh, days until you get it, which is almost until 1940, which is 1940, I'm sorry. When you see a gap between things, that means until 1948, you can do this. And you can do them over, but 
it's preferably in between 1946 and 1948. Alright! Where was I? Production. We finished with nukes, um, naval base, uh, land fort, and coastal fort. Naval base is again for the navy. Land fort is um, if you want to protect, for example, Romania, you are bored here so you can build some land for to protect you from the Soviet Union, like the... How is this what's called? The Maginot Line. Like the Maginot Line to protect you from a country. Better. Of course, you cannot let without divisions. You are not invisible if you put a wall. You will need some divisions to protect the wall and help you with the wall. But it will be harder for the enemy to penetrate your beautiful country. And coastal fort is the same as land fort, except it's about your coastline, your precious, precious coastline, the best of them all. And here, you have too many military factories, you can put them in uh, normal factory. And you can choose the amount you convert, for example, by placing on a count you can convert, I can convert everything from Kentucky to something, to what, or to what I need. If you have too many civilian factories, you can confirm the two military factories to make guns and stuff. If you have too many uh, military factories, you can do them for civilian factories for trading and building. Trade, if you are still talking about trading. You need civilian factories to trade. Easy. Then you press on we are of these three. Up there, you can see how much oil, um, aluminium, rubber, tungsten, metal. And chronium we, we, we have. You see, when it is minus 6 and in big, big, big red, it means bad, you need the material, come on, trade fast, fast. If it's clean, it means yeah, kind of good. You don't really need to st uh, think about it for that. If it's uh, white, it's like, okay, you have enough. Um, not for now, but maybe a bit later. You don't need to think. And, you need, and then you press on the count, and then you do this scroll and choose how many effects. Beware, if you put 24, you're gonna be many without buildings, you can't build anything else. So, usually go for the exact amount you need. For example, I, uh, I drop it, I just press once, done. I can see here, I'm gonna have my rub. I'm gonna move capital to reach one because I don't care. And now our name is now the Confederate States of America. Alright. We have talked about trading, it's not so easy, and you can press what country you want to trade for. Imagine, if it's on top of that, that means it's the best trader of the military, and it has to work. You can even hover on top of countries to see in which province they have material. For example, British Malaya and Indonesia have the biggest materials. If you conquer these countries, they have almost all the materials in the world needed. You can hover on top of countries, see what materials each one has. And then look to with who you do want to trade. That's easy as that. Production. Um, it's easy. You need military factors and resources. You see here what they say. You can see how many resources you need. If it becomes red, there is no. That is bad, mate. Do not try anymore. Or else you're gonna be minus the resources and you do not want that. But you just. Click on them. Recruit and deploy. You press this button and you can train soldiers. If you press controller and press shift, I'm sorry, and press, you can make double the amount. So you can do it fast. Remember, you need arms. The most important things in infantry you can support equipment to make soldiers. You can edit the template by adding other stuff, but you need military points if you use too many military points your army loses their toughness for you, let's just say and it's harder for you to conquer countries as usually as before 
and logistics just tells you what you need or what you don't have um, again if it's yellow it's okay if it's red it means bad and if it's green it means good now we're gonna teach you about something that you all been exciting for it's called bloody war damn I can I'm such an idiot. And when you you need to hold your mouse and just move it like you do on your desktop when you want to choose multiple files. Move it and then when you choose your divisions you just press right click on top of the missing item. Then you can go to click on to assign and then look and then hover on top of them and check the commander's skills and press it. Then you can press click and you can and if they are like brighter than the rest that means you can use them. If not that means you can't use them. And of course you need command power for this ones. Alright. You press on it and it gives you a big man. You mind asking? What the heck is this menu? And why do we bloody in it? Because the game wants you to use it. That's all. Um, exercise means you can get time experience by doing nothing. But remember your fuel goes down while exercising. Execute better plans if you're sad man. Okay, they can stop sometimes and relax for one month. And go again. Naval invasion order. You can talk. You can put your troops to naval invade the coastline of a country again. Everything almost in this game is doing with the right click button. So just remember it. Um, perish troopers. If only if you have teleport troopers, you can like jump with airplanes on top of uh, land parts of the country. This tactic was used before for France. Just put some paratroopers in their most important cities and then they'll just get rid of Ah, front line. Um, just press right click on the front line and done. They made a front line for you. And press right. I'm sorry, left click. Press left click to make the front line. And then press left click to make an offensive line. And then right click to draw it. As such. Or you can throw it like this if you want and done. Alright, this is spearhead, aka go faster! Fallback line is if you start losing and you, for example, you see this river, you want to make a river line. So it's gonna be harder for the country to conquer it. Do the river line. Area defense is when you want to defend parts of a country. You just left click on the part on the states you want to defend, for example, in America, like Texas, and all your army will be sent there to garrison. Just remember, um, while garrisoning, um, your army will get more space, so you can, except of 24 equipment army, you can equip like 72. Very important. Damn, my one. This is the state of Texas. In the bloody United States of America. This is a Simon mode. It's for example, you have multiple front lines. Here and here. Uh, you can choose half of your army. And then put them at the Canadian border. And outside the side divisions when you want to put them back at the to Mexico. Edit mode if you want to edit your plan. And delete orders. You have a stupid order, you don't want it. Just press this. And uh, this is this mental safety. Okay, you delete your whole army. I did once the mistake. Um, if you ever asked why I never uploaded the second part of the also Muslim one, it's because I by accident pressed this button like an idiot and all my army. And then I just gave up out of frustration. A 
just remember don't be an idiot like me um uh, change division template if you want to change your division to national guard division by the way i'm gonna teach you uh, by the way you can left click on them and then press oh, damn. and then shift and right you so for example you press on one right you want to set multiple to change the template you press shift and left and choose multiple and then you change division choose you want to cover you want the national guard division you want the infantry division each one has their buffs and the uh, recruit and deploy just hover on top of them it's gonna tell you what each one does almost if you if you look here you want all specification the best is infantry division but some cavalry are not bad i need to admit This strategy and redeploy order is off. If you want uh, the uh, the soldiers to redeploy a bit faster, you can use it. But the best way is to keep it off, in my opinion. If you want to consolidate the units to tell them go fight, you bloody hell. Take half the current divisions is for the division assignment mode, where it's trying to assign some divisions to a border. Shortcut. If you want to stop your division site in the track or unassign units if you want to just a kick them out of the army or be something else all right let me teach you a bit about war and what's the better way than conquering our little brother mexico i uh, firstly Would like to teach you something about the war mechanics. I declare war on the country without justification this time, but usually you need to get it for 240 days. You see red blobs? Red blobs means bad, you are losing in this uh, fight. Green blobs means yay, you are winning. And you can see in how many days you can currently. If a red blob gets to zero, uh, the the enemy takes part of your car. If the green blob um, gets to zero, then you get part of the country. It's not that hard. Now let us just conquer them. You see, they, for example, penetrated a bit in California. May just go and take Mexico City for God's sake. We are the Confederacy for God's sake. I just changed this country's history for it. If the South won, they would have the capital at Richmond and they would be strong. Like now. Just take the capital for God's sake. second I'm going to the last part of the tutorial oh yes now here you can have multiple things you can do this puppet aka they will become your puppet state and you can almost control them but they'll have sort of autonomy against you for instance they have their own leader they can still use their focus tree the only problem with puppeting is they can still fight against you if they don't like you 
and if they want their independence, they can declare war on you, and you need to fight them again. But in this scenario, it's done. It's, it's, it might be a better solution to puppet them than take all the states. Take all states means um, you now become part of my country, you don't have any autonomy, but they might do resistance, and if resistance gets high, like I told you at the beginning of the video, it's kind of better. Or you can just left click on states you want. For example, I want these two states. No, or I want the whole of northern Mexico under my control, and I want to copy the rest. You can totally do that. Like I did here. I just next to north of Mexico and left the rest to its and you can see the resistor level are growing in this part because they were part of of uh, Spanish language country and they don't really like us. So yeah, and this is the tutorial, there's nothing else to say, but if you did you like the video, don't forget to comment, like and subscribe, and tell me in the comments if you like to hear a, a tutorial about the intelligence agency, and the last time, I hope you enjoyed the video, don't forget to comment, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time, goodbye.